Okay, just something real quick on uh, wireless mics. This is um, focusing on uh, the antennas as well as how much power a microphone is going to put out. And in addition to a microphone, that could be a belt pack that you're wearing for a wireless guitar. And as well, it could be a um, transmitter for your in-ear monitor system. So with the mics, I'm um, sorry, with the uh, receivers, when you see small antennas like this, uh, these antennas are considered uh, quarter wave antennas. And the other antennas that you may see on some wireless gear, when you see them tall like this, let me see if you can see that better. There you go. When you see tall antennas like this, these are considered half wave antennas. You really can't interchange uh, antennas back and forth. The height of the antenna is on purpose. It's not for an aesthetics reason and it has to do with the frequencies that it is trying to pick up. So the half wave, quarter wave, just so you know the size. Um, when you're looking at it, you'll know I'm looking at a half wave or a quarter wave antenna. Roughly, here's how the antennas work. When you see them sitting like this, this, does, this is not the best use of the antennas because the antennas pick up their signal from around, if you will, an imaginary donut around this antenna. Now imagine it, you know, extending way out, and the further you get out, you know, the, the wider the height of this donut becomes. So when you have both antennas sitting like this, they're both picking up the same thing. But the problem with that is, imagine like two people going out in a forest, and they're trying to locate somebody or locate something. Having the antennas like this would be like these two people walking the exact same path, looking at the exact same thing. You've got two people, you're not really accomplishing much of anything. You're accomplishing the work of one person, but you're taking two people to do it. So, to take an advantage of this uh, donut area that it receives, we push the antennas out to the side. Now, this antenna is going to be picking up this sort of donut area, but it's going to be changing its angle. Now, this antenna is picking up a donut area, but its angle is like this. So now, this receiver is now picking up a much broader range of, uh, if you will, of an area where the signal can come from. So this is why you always want to keep your antennas spread apart like this to pick them up, to, to do the best job in picking up a signal. And again, not like this. This is not the best, it's not the best option. Even with these larger antennas, sending them up like that's not going to work. You always want to keep them spread out like that. They do a much better job picking up the signals. All right, and uh, here's our Sennheiser system uh, that we have. It's just a couple of mics, but uh, as you can tell on these antennas, they are quarter wave antennas and they are positioned exactly how they should be uh, for the best reception. Okay, so let's say you've done all you can to get the best reception out of your wireless mic or maybe your in-ear monitor system or even a wireless belt pack you may be using for maybe your guitar or a sax or something like that, but you're not too sure what's going on. Well, an often overlooked specification in wireless e equipment is how much power these put out. And I'll just grab a, here a prop, there we go. For example, this mic right there. Looking at it, you're not gonna know how much power that mic puts out but it's one of the most overlooked specs in, in trying to uh, decide on what kind of uh, wireless mic system you want to use. So let's take a look at the power. Okay, one of the most often overlooked specifications in a, in a transmitter is how much power they can put out. And if you look in your spec manual, it should show up as like as RF output power or transmitter power and expressed in milliwatts. Most common uh, transmitter power levels are 10 milliwatt, 30 milliwatt, and 50 milliwatt. Uh, 30 should be used in almost every situation, especially if it's a large stage, but 10 milliwatts are great because they are very affordable 
uh, devices. And if you see something in the manual that says it's switchable, the power is not switchable. What they're telling you is that the manufacturer is the one who sets the power and that's dependent upon the country. Uh, in this photo here, there is a 30 milliwatt uh, Shure SM58 uh, rack that's in on top. The uh, One of the organizers of the event gave us this rack to use, which is nice of them. And it was well needed for this type of event. And we probably had about um, maybe 800 to 1,000 people at this event. And with the mic sitting back this far, this is probably about 80 feet from front of house to the stage, we needed something that had a lot of power. And also, which was important, was the line of sight. The racks were up high enough that it didn't interfere with anything from the stage. Okay, and here's some uh, examples of uh, the 30 milliwatt units. This is a Sennheiser's. Okay, and uh, here are the uh, Shure SM58. So the real well, no, um, no skipping or anything. Okay, in this photo here, to the right of the mixing board, we've got a little transmitter, pardon me, a, a receiver there for a mic. It was a 10 milliwatt AKG, and this is for a uh, city parade and uh, the MC is a, would be about 50 maybe 60 feet ahead there at the intersection now this mic uh, generally worked pretty good but uh, unfortunately it did not work that well for this event and here's why okay if you notice the uh, MC he is on the other side of where the traffic comes up through the parade route and you can tell that uh, there is uh, quite a few people between him and where the tent is or where that picture was taken from. And to have a low milliwattage mic trying to transmit through traffic and through a whole group of people, uh, it doesn't work out very good. As well, the line of sight between the microphone and the receiver uh, was uh, rather uh, dense. So there are a lot of issues with trying to get a, uh, a good consistent signal between the mic and the receiver. Now this has nothing to do with the MC. He's just out there walking around talking to people. I took that receiver, so just to the right of the board, and I attached it to the top rail of the tent at the top of the picture. Hooked everything up there, got the antenna set right, and then after that there were no issues with uh, any kind of dropouts. And uh, needless to say, this was the last time that uh, we used a 10 milliwatt uh, mic uh, for anything, for any of these types of events. I mean, so he was probably maybe 50 or 60 feet away and it still failed. So now what we do is uh, we use a 30 milliwatt Audio-Technica mic. Never had any issues with it. Uh, we could easily get a, more than 100 feet away and still have plenty of power. And by doing this, this allowed us to uh, pull our van back further away from the area. And all we had to do was just stick the antenna on top of the van and we had no issues. Okay, and so just some things to keep in mind that are very important. Make sure your antennas are positioned correctly. Make sure there is a line of sight. It doesn't have to be a 100% free line of sight, relatively speaking, but you need to be able to see uh, the mics and the people using them and ensure the transmitter has enough power. 30 milliwatts is a standard, but said there's absolutely nothing wrong with 10 milliwatts. It's just they're really not suited for large stages. They're great for small venues, small events, uh, but unfortunately they really can't be used for anything larger than that.
Okay, and as always, thanks for watching.